it's about developing different angles. You might have one idea in mind. I want to appear on the cover and we might not be able to do that, but maybe there's another story that is really compelling that we're able to tell, but we can't figure that out just from a photo. We need to have a relationship with you. Hey, do you want to be an architectural digest? Then keep listening. Have you hit a wall when it comes to growing your interior design business? Then welcome to Wingnut Social, the podcast specifically designed to accelerate your business through increased social media presence, impactful online content, and translating industry experience into physical success. This is your design business tightly fastened. Now welcome the hosts of Wingnut Social, Darla Powell and Natalie Graff. Hey there, welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. I am your host, the Grand High Poobah of all things Wingnut, the head CEO, the chief Grand High Muckety Muck, Darla Powell. No Jethro today. And I'm not feeling very Jethro-y. And I'm joined by the soulless ginger, Natalie Ann Graff. Welcome. And Darla, your introduction with all these things you are, and I'm just the simple soulless ginger. Natalie is also the CFO of Wingnut Social. She <laughs> is the project manager of Darla Powell Interiors. She is a firefighter by day and by night on every third day, and she makes all the jelly at the Amish bakery. Natalie, how the hell are you? Oh, I'm pretty good. I slept last night. Oh, she's also a podcast host. What else do you do? I'm forgetting a hat. Well, let's see. I'm a mom. You are a mom. Yes. So am I. To an actual child. I'm a stepmom. You are a good stepmom. I'm the evil stepmother. <laughs> no, I think I think Abby considers you as the cool stepmother. Well, that's because she's very astute and observant. That's because you guys gang up on me and you think it's <laughs> funny. I had someone tell me yesterday that I needed to work on my avatar, that my hair was really not that red. And I said, well, yeah, my kid made it. And they're like, oh, yeah, no, you got to keep it. I'm like, I know. <laughs> well, you are a ginger. I mean, you're a you're a ginger light, right? So you do have a lot of strawberry blonde in your hair, but really where the ginger shows, well, you put a lot of product in your hair too, which which really darkens your hair, you know, because you're you and your hair, Jesus. It can't be messed up. But you have that freckly ginger vitus all I over. I do. I'm aware of this. Yes. Natalie. Yes. We're into the new year. We're well within the new year. Let's talk a second about resolutions and diet. <laughs> well, didn't that go out the window, I heard. <laughs> On your solo episode, you did promise that there would be a new diet. And here it is. Um, it's not new so much. I'm doing intermittent fasting again, which I love. However, I did derail myself yesterday. Let's, say, let's just say there was McDonald's and Dairy Queen involved. However... I'm being loving and forgiving to myself. It was still in my window and today's a new day. I'm not I'm not trying to beat myself up. And for those of you listening that know that I'm a firefighter and I work every third day, it seems Darla derails every third day that I'm at work. I was are you saying it's just because I'm lonely and I miss you? Yeah, you miss me. That's that's what I'm saying. Or maybe it's because I can get away with it without being judged. I don't do <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, now you make me sound like uh I'm a slave driver judgy. Oh, you're right. You're not. You're not so much. A no, a just bit. a little bit. Just because I'm, you know, pretty salad and, and whatever. My diet was a little blown yesterday. Not too bad, though. Pretty salad. You're no, pre you're pretty salad. No, because I eat too much salad. I don't know. All right, Natalie. Natalie Ann Graff. Yes, Darla Jethro, pal. You know, why do I say Jethro? Just as an aside. Just people are like, what the hell? This girl is whack. Jethro It's just because my middle initial is J. My middle name is Julie, and people say, hey, what's your middle name? And I just it just tickles me to say Jethro. Because you are whack, Darla. This is why you say this. There is no question. I'm a whack, but there's a method to my madness. <laughs> Natalie and Graf, today we're talking about getting published. And who better to give advice to our designers listening than the editor for Architectural Digest? In fact, our guest today, Katie Olson, is the editor of AD Pro. You guys may have heard of that. That's Architectural Digest Pro, which is one of their verticals for you guys, the design industry. We're going to ask her about that a little bit, but mostly we're going to be diving into how the hell to get into magazines, what are editors looking for? And we have gone over this before with Sarah Lynn Brennan from a designer's perspective, but today we're going to be getting a big deal, big shot editor's perspective, and I cannot wait to dive in. So let me tell you guys a little bit more about Katie Olson. 
Katie Olson is the editor of AD Pro, duh, I just said that, Architectural Digest membership community for interior designers and other members of the trade. She has an extensive background in editorial and content strategy, including roles as executive editor of Business of Home, as well as roles at Hearst Corporation, People Magazine, and WorkStyle, a Swiss magazine based in Milan that first introduced her to the magic of Salon de Mobile. Ooh. Remember, remember, um, Sasha Bykoff talked about that mm-hmm. in her interview. She received her Master of Science with honors from the Columbia University Graduate School of Journalism and is a Reiki master, newly minted yoga teacher and native New Yorker. Wow, that's a serious resume. That's fascinating. Wingnuts, help me in welcoming Katie Olson to the Wingnut Social Podcast. Hey there, Katie Olson. Welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. How the hell are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Uh, it's our pleasure. We're really stoked to have someone from Architectural Digest. Hello, on board the podcast to give out nuggets of wisdom to our listeners about how to get published. And who better than to go straight to the source for that information? Isn't it called the horse's mouth? Or is that only an Amish <laughs> yes, joke? I will try not to be offended. I, I love horses. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So see, Darla, you could have said straight from the horse's mouth. And, and like you said, who better? Awesome. So Katie, how our paths crossed is we had uh, some conversations because I checked into Architectural Digest Pro, which is known as AD Pro. And you are the editor of that vertical for Architectural Digest, right? Yes, exactly. So AD Pro started as a vertical, I guess, two years ago now. And in April of last year, we relaunched. I was brought on to help relaunch it as a membership community. So it originally started as you know a simple section on the site. And today it's really grown into something a little bit bigger than that. Awesome. So what is the thinking behind AD Pro? Who's your target audience? And what can designers get from going over and checking it out and maybe even joining that community? I'm, I'm super curious for myself. This is a very selfish question. So AD Pro is really the brainchild of Amy, who's, as you know, is our editor in chief of Architectural Digest. And it was conceived as a B2B membership similar to Women's Wear Daily, where interior designers, architects, and other people within our industry and adjacent industries can sort of come together, get entertained, informed, and inspired. So while anyone can pick up AD, the magazine, and really enjoy it and get something out of it, AD Pro is sort of our deeper dive into the industry. So we provide news. We do trend reports around different trade shows. I have one coming up around Maison Objet and Deco Off later this month. We'll do one for Milan Design Week. Of course, High Point is top of mind for us too. On top of the trend reports, we also do... I think it's either six, it's between six and eight stories every single day. So it's quite a lot of content. It focuses on um, international news, national news, and we have a really robust regional section where we target a number of different regions within the States and designers here and try to deliver them the news and the inspiration that they need in their neck of the woods. Okay, now here as a non-interior designer and someone that I know what Architectural Digest is, so is AD Pro just the online sister of this? No, it's not. So we do have AD, we call it AD Classic internally, that's ArcDigest.com. AD Pro lives on ArcDigest.com, but it's really its own community. So we do have a paywall. It is a subscription service, and we have a number of in-person activations too. So we've had different panels, um, educational programs that meet in person. We've done some in New York and Chicago, and this year we have a number of them coming up too. So there's AD, you know, the magazine, there's AD.com, and then there's AD Pro, which is, again, sort of a, it's a deeper dive, and it's also a community. That's really what we're aiming to create with it. And I love that because I'm an interior designer in Miami, Florida. I have Darla Powell Interior. So this is why it was such a selfish (laughs) question. So it sounds amazing, like it's full of information. But besides the information, what are some of the benefits that interior designers can receive from being a member of AD Pro? Are there business tips for the interior design business? Tell us just a little bit about that. And then we'll dive into getting published in Architectural Digest and becoming one of the top 100. (laughs) The most visually compelling and one that is sort of like my personal baby is the archive. So we have access to about a century of the AD archive. We give that access to our AD Pro members. I have a team of students from the New York School of Interior Design. They're incredible and they go through and tag each of the feature images in these old issues so that it's searchable. That's an ongoing project. Our sister magazines, you know, Vogue, Vanity Fair, 
have, have already archived all of their content and we're well on our way to doing that too. And that, that's a benefit that's exclusive to our members. As far as business content goes, we have an entire section devoted to that on our site. It's called Grow Your Business. It aims to educate not just designers who are starting out, but also people who are established. So whether that's, you know, how do I appear first in a Google search to how do I hire someone? How do I fire someone? These are sort of the topics that we tackle there. We also have an advice column that lives there. So yeah, there's a lot of content for that. And in person, as I mentioned before, we're working on educational programs where we bring in top editors from the magazine to interview different you know, influencers and experts in the field live. That's on our radar for this year. I have a question about your educational program. Are you offering any CEUs for any of the designers for that? Or is that maybe to come? So right now, no, but that's definitely something that's on my radar. Awesome. Okay. So if you're listening and you're interested in checking out AD Pro, we'll definitely have that link in the show notes. But I'm going to guess, is it adpro.com or is there... <laughs> <laughs> it's architecturaldigest.com backslash AD Pro. Okay. That link will be in the show notes, guys. So if you can go over to wingnutsocial.com slash podcast and you can see all that juicy goodness. Yes. And we'll be sure to give you a 20% discount for listeners, which I'll share with you after the show. You can include it in the notes. Ooh. Oh, an even juicier <laughs> link for the notes. Okay. We aim to please. <laughs> Forget what I just said. We'll, we'll get to that link. Okay, cool. All right. So now that we've kind of understand what AD Pro is in the vertical and architectural digest, I'm really excited about it, by the way. How do you get in it? <laughs> <laughs> there no, you go. There's no, the burning not question. Not 80 Pro. You really want to know how you get an architectural digest. Okay, so we all want to be in the top 100 <laughs> and get published. And we have had guests on in the past who have been interior designers who have been Vanessa Helmick, Sarah Lynn Brennan, who have been successful getting published. But you're our first editor who is going to give your viewpoint on how to accomplish getting published. And you're not just any editor. Architectural digest is like the pinnacle, right? So let's dive in. What are you looking for from interior designers to consider getting a project published in Architectural Digest just from the basics? And if it's not Architectural Digest, just in general, what should designers be doing with their photo shoots, with their work to catch the eye of editors such as yourself? Sure. It's it's a great question. It's one that we get a lot. Of course, I'm with AD Pro. So our section, again, is focused more on B2B and less on the gorgeous design that you see in the print pages. But first and foremost, no matter what outlet you're pitching, you really want to research which magazine. If you have an extremely modern aesthetic, maybe AD is not the right place, right? We're very classic. But of course, you can open the pages and see a range of styles. But number one, first and foremost, you want to research which outlet is the best fit for you. I tell designers this all the time, you know, doing your homework really pays dividends. If you can do as much research as possible, figure out who the editor um, that you're targeting is. So if you're trying to get into a certain section of the magazine, who's the one who's managing that? At AD, our masthead is public. You know, it's, it's online. It's also, of course, in the magazine. So you can go through the masthead is for those who are not in, in the industry. It's, it's basically the page that tells you who edits what page. So if you want to appear in the feature section, which of course is, is the major spread of a print magazine, you'll want to reach out to the features editor and, and share your project that way. So I would say you can explore the site and see where your news or your project might fit. At AD Pro, we often just, we do publish projects, of course, like we do office walkthroughs, hospitality walkthroughs, that kind of thing. But we also publish news. So if you're launching a product collection, you might want to reach out to our market editor because he would be in charge of product coverage. That's one example. So would getting into AD Pro with a, a project that you have, like you said, the walkthroughs, maybe you're doing a before and after a finished project, and correct me if I'm off base here, would that help a designer get their toe in the door to maybe getting some a gravitas to getting featured in Architectural Digest if the style is correct, or are the two disconnected and it wouldn't really have an impact? No, our, our teams are really collaborative. We often work with our print editors. We meet regularly, first of all, with our print editors, um, and they feed us a lot of information. They're out in the market. They're experts. They've been doing this collectively for decades and decades. So they really, they have their ear to the ground. So we work with them really collaboratively, and often they'll send us something that may not work for the print magazine or vice versa. We'll feed them something that we feel might work better for print or, as I said before, architecturaldigest.com is the home of the print magazine online. And that's a really great place to appear as well. 
when a designer is, is going to go ahead and pitch you this idea for their photographs, are we looking for professional photography or are you, if you see something and you don't really like those pictures that they have, are you willing to give them a chance to go ahead and reshoot their project if it is something that you're interested in? Yeah, definitely. Of course, it's great to have scouting shots, speaking for AD Pro, but in general, other magazines that I've worked at, it's always helpful to get scouting shots. We have a number of photographers that we work with consistently. You can find their names in the magazine. And one tip that we tend to share is if you have the budget, hire a photographer that we work with or that another magazine that you're pitching works with frequently because that photographer knows the style of the magazine. And that always helps. Oh, that's a great tip. Would they also help to like kind of network you in? Like say if I got uh, Joe Photographer who works for Architectural Digest and he shoots my space and he says, oh, by the way, I happen to know the editor. I'm, I have this this networking connection. I'm going to help get you published or submitted or give you some extra legs on this project. Does that how that works? I do not know. Exactly. I mean, any kind of networking helps. And we, we work with a small, very talented pool of photographers, both for print and the web. So any kind of connection always helps, you know. I think as an editor, what's most important is that the information is given to us in a really clear, easy, quick way. So what I mean by that is, you know, our communication is really polite and quick and delivers, you know, a couple main points, which I can, I can certainly share with you. (laughs) I have a question from the uh, financial standpoint of this. What should a designer budget to possibly work with one of your talented photographers? Uh, Just a rough range doesn't have to be to the T. I'm just looking for a rough here. Yeah, she's, I, she's the money girl. I'm the money girl. Sorry, <laughs> that's just what I do. And so now if I want to hire one of your photographers, what do I need to budget? They're freelancers so that they would be setting their own rates. That's not something that, that I would even have information on because we work with them in a different capacity than they would work with a designer. So since this lovely talent pool is freelancers, you do have a place on the AD Pro website where we can find a list of these talented men and women? You'll see the photo credits in the magazine or on the site. There's always a courtesy line. That's how you can know who shot what. You can tell Natalie doesn't really thumb through Architectural no, Digest. I don't. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. There's there's complete transparency here, and these questions are for those that are just listening that don't ask what they want to know. And I always or ask don't what know, I want yeah. to know. No, exactly. I, th- I think it's great. That's why I explain what a masthead is because that's something that. I know because I've only ever worked in magazines, but the average person who's picking up a magazine, who wants to read a page full of other people's names? I mean, unless it's useful um, to you from a business standpoint, who really cares? (laughs) Right. I had no clue. So I'm glad you explained that. I had no idea. That's what I'm here for. Excellent. Thank you, Katie. Okay, so Katie, let's talk about social media exposure when you're submitting content to a magazine like Architectural Digest. How much, if any, is okay for the designer to have already posted on Instagram for you to still consider it? Or is what I've heard absolutely true that if you have even a little bit of that there, you're done. You're they don't want you posting it anywhere. I would want to say absolutely not if it's posted anywhere. But When it comes to news or photos or projects, pretty much anything, we love exclusivity, as do most magazines and news outlets worth their salt. We love having the news first. We love having the images first. That's very important to us. So I wouldn't say, you know, unilaterally, no, we wouldn't take something that already appeared somewhere, especially if it was maybe a local news outlet or on a, a social account that's not really followed. I would never say absolutely not, but I would strongly encourage if you want to appear in a certain magazine, go to that magazine first with exclusivity without anything having appeared anywhere else. That'll give yourself the best shot. What about stories? They're so ephemeral. They're only on there for 24 hours. What's the chance of you guys seeing that? Can we be sneaky and just kind of throw it in a story and 24 hours later, it's gone? (laughs) Oh, like an Instagram story. Yeah. That's a good question. I I mean, I think the same rule applies. I mean, of course, somebody can screenshot it, but Uh, true. I think that's probably even... Almost just tell her no. Yeah, just say no. You can say no. Just it's say okay. no. Darla, would... <laughs> Darla, you're completely out of your mind. You're crazy. Follow the damn rules and move along. I was trying to be sneaky. I'm so obsessed with getting just stuff tell out her on no, social Katie. media. Natalie and Giraffe. Yes, Darla Jethro Powell. Who is our go-to vendor for Darla Powell Interiors? Oh, that's easy. Curry and Company. And why is that, Natalie? Oh, because let me tell you, they have beautiful stuff. They are every designer's and, of course, project manager. That's me. Dream to work with. (laughs) Because did you know that over 90% of their stuff is in stock? That's like 1,700 SKUs at all times. 
I did. And Korean Company has top-notch service, quick shipping, and very reasonable order minimums, which is really important, if, especially if you're a hashtag baby designer. Absolutely. I know you guys go to them first. Say, hey, we're going to hit Korean Company. What do they got? How can they help us? It's amazing. So, Darla, where do they have to run on over to? That's right. So, guys, be sure to head on over to curryandcompany.com and scroll your little fingers on down to that designer checkbox and sign up for their stellar trade program today. Oh, and be sure to tell Beth Ann that we sent you. She's amazing. I love Beth Ann. She's a fireball. I wish I had her energy. Again, that's curryandcompany.com. You can thank us later. Natalie and I were at High Point Fall Market, and I was on a panel at Universal, and I happened to be there with Corey Damon Jenkins, and we were talking about PR. And he gave a great tip to designers, and I'm going to see if this drives with you, that when you're shooting a space, you also have to consider the negative space in the photo if you want to get on the cover. You know, figure out the magazine that you're applying for, where they normally put their title of their magazine, where they normally put their copy, and leave some negative space in that shot. If you're submitting it and hope to get on the cover, it might not be something you would put on your your website so much, mm-hmm. but that sounded smart as hell to me. Is he on, is he on point with that? Yeah, I'm sure he is, especially for magazines that may not have the budget to shoot their own cover. I mean, in, in our case, we always shoot our own. We would take care of that. But the research that's behind that, I think, is very helpful, knowing your audience and knowing the type of feel that the magazine that you're submitting to kind of embodies or pushes that's really important. So the sentiment is for sure applies to us. It's just that we shoot our own. Oh, okay. So I know he's been featured in House Beautiful and several other magazines. You know, that's a good point. I'm not sure if they use his imagery or maybe that was in some of the smaller magazines he's been featured in. That's good to know. So do you shoot just the cover or will you go, if you have a project like that, that's cover worthy, will you send someone out and just reshoot the whole thing? Or do you just do do a little bit of a hybrid? That would be shot by us, by our team. Oh, cool. We have a century old tradition that we need to uphold. (laughs) Oh, just a hundred years. Oh, you guys are just, just been around just for a little bit now. Come on, Natalie. Had another question. Yeah, if a designer sends you a project and you guys are like, no, we're going to wait, we're going to pass. So let's say three or four months pass and the designer decides to go ahead and send you the project again, but at a different angle. Are you guys willing to take a look at it again or once and done, you're out so long, too bad. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's a great question because it speaks to the relationship that a designer has with an editor, which is really important. I, I would say the number one most important thing towards getting published, of course, it's having a beautiful design, but it's also having a relationship with an editor. Who, um, you can bounce ideas off of the editor. So if you have a good relationship with an editor, you begin to cultivate one, you can say to her, to him, give it to me straight. Like, is this ever going to work? Or is there any angle that we can potentially um, use? So if I can't appear in the magazine, maybe there's some important business discussion that we can turn this project into, and then it'll appear on pro, for example. It all comes down to cultivating a relationship with an editor who can then look for other angles that maybe you yourself don't see it as a designer or who can get on the phone with you and say, okay, what were the major challenges of this project? Or was there a particularly compelling story behind the project that we can't see based on the photos alone? So it's about developing different angles. You might have one idea in mind. I want to appear on the cover and we might not be able to do that. But maybe there's another story that is really compelling that we're able to tell, but we can't figure that out just from a photo. We need to have a relationship with you. Awesome. Excellent answer. Okay. So let's get back to getting published in Architectural Digest, not just generally. You did mention earlier that if you're more of a contemporary designer, you're not going to be featured there. And anyone that's familiar with the magazine, our audiences, designers and decorators and home pros are going to say no duh, Darla. But what aesthetic specifically is Architectural Digest looking for from interior designers? If you're out there, is it just, is it maximalist now? Is it, I know I know it's classic and anyone familiar with the magazine, like I said, will kind of know the style, but are there any specific tips or recommendations you can give designers to throw in there that might help them get traction? Again, I think with AD Pro, which is really like what I'm focused on versus the print, although we do work together, there is a little bit more room to cover different styles. And if you page through the magazine, you'll see a range of different styles. And certainly if you go through our archive, you'll see how our aesthetic has changed over the years and how it's remained the same too. There's a lot in the magazine from decades ago that could still be published today because the design is just so solid, like it's timeless. So it could feel modern, it could feel classic, but there's a sense of timelessness about it that I think is really important. And I would imagine our print editors would agree with that. But I think the number one way to kind of gauge that is to flip through the pages. 
I love that. It's not so like the latest trend. It's not so trendy and which could tend to date a space. And I think that was very well put. That absolutely describes the classic quote unquote. I'm doing air quotes. That was a perfect answer. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. Can you give me just a couple tips maybe when you open something up and a primary reason why you would just immediately say, nope, you're done. Rejected. Why you got to be so negative? Because I, I feel like that today. I don't know. It's just kind of what I think. You know, where do you put your rejection stamp? I mean, how soon can you open a project and say, nope, and maybe give a little tip of one or two things of not to do? What's so where right? it doesn't immediately ruffle that hair on the back of your neck and you're like, oh, hell no. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, if there's a project that's absolutely stunning and I, I get an email that's really rude, of course, I'm not going to just, you know, throw it away. Ooh, but Rude but email. Being Why told, would somebody be rude? Well, I mean, look, we get a lot of emails. I probably get 100 emails a day. And sometimes they're mass emails or the name is spelled wrong or oh, they're gotcha. pitching something that doesn't apply at all to what we cover. So I would never, again, unilaterally say, no, this is not something I'm ever going to pursue. But there are certain things that designers can certainly do to kind of cultivate that relationship that you know, I've been mentioning. Um, information that can be included in the email, that anything that makes our lives a little bit easier, knowing that we get hundreds of emails every day. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if there's I know the feeling, uh, yeah, I can imagine including, you know, some high res, high quality images. We don't need 50 of them, but maybe the four best. If there's a ton and you can't choose, you can send over a Dropbox or a WeTransfer link. It's also really useful if you include the photographer credit information, because we also need to make sure that, you know, we have the rights to publish these images. That's all very helpful. So sort of like taking care of the housekeeping, that's very helpful to us. In the first email, right? Include your housekeeping in that, you know, hey, Katie, please, you know, take a look at my project. By the way, here's a link. Here's the photographer. Um, here's this. Here's that. And, and go ahead and, and put some of that housekeeping in that very first email. Yes. Let's take that back a second. Let's say they don't have a relationship with you as the editor and they're pitching to you for the first time. Go ahead and do all of those things. Yes. And it doesn't have to be a long email. Everything can fit in a single paragraph pretty much. This is the project that I've been working on. It hasn't been published anywhere or, I mean, unless that's not true. These photos were shot by so-and-so. You have the rights to publish them. Sometimes what's helpful for us at AD Pro is if there's a little bit of an anecdote or a business angle, again, we're B2B designer focused. So if there's a little angle of, you know, this project came about because I networked at this event and, you know, so-and-so introduced me and, or maybe there's a business hurdle that you confronted within the project. Any kind of special angle, of course, if it's, for example, for a big celebrity, that's super, super helpful. You should lead with that information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to open with that. Yes. <laughs> I know, that, you know, that would be that would be for the AD classic, less so for pro, although we're always open. Oh, we need to find some Miami celebrities, Natalie, and design their space. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty. There's plenty there's to be plenty out here. That, there's plenty that live here, but I don't know about that. Katie, you have given us some excellent tips on how to get published both in AD Pro and in Architectural Digest and it has the benefits of AD Pro and how it can help designers. But now I have to ask you if you're ready for the What Up Wingnut round. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever be ready, so we should just start. <laughs> now it's time for What Up Wingnut. Wingnut. Katie Olson. If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? I thought about this, and I'm not a sad person, but I love the weeping willow. I think it's just so beautiful. It goes where the wind blows. It's very um, flexible, and yeah, I, I think it's such a gorgeous tree. Do you consider yourself a romantic? Yes, 100%. Okay. I think those two go hand in hand, right? <laughs> that's, it's such a beautiful tree. I, I love it. We do get a few of those. That's just, just a... See, that's why this question is not ridiculous. It's very no, revealing psychologically. I, I see one on my way to work every morning. So it's... Um, Aww, I live in a nice. really beautiful green neighborhood. So there's one I see every morning and I sort of wave high to it. So that's why it's top of mind. <laughs> Listen, I feel you. I have a lychee tree in my yard. His name is Bob, and I talk to him every morning. Oh, so. <laughs> it keeps them healthy. I, I, um, I do Reiki, and I, I'm a Reiki master, and I give my plants Reiki. Okay, listen. I'm going to get off track here. Natalie's looking at me like I've lost my damn mind. <laughs> but it's true. Plants do feel our energy. I talk to them all the time. It's scientifically proven that they 
grow better, they're healthier. Okay. Exactly. The only problem is, is if they start to talk back, then we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that, then you got to stop taking the hallucinogens. <laughs> hallucinogens. You, hallucinogens. Yeah. You, you got you to gotta set that stuff aside. Maybe maybe not take so much. Natalie, hallucinogens. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. Though. All right. Katie, what would the hashtag on your tombstone be? Oh, my gosh. I think... This is a really tough one. I think it would be that. Do you know that emoji of the girl with her her the shrugging emoji when you put shrug? <laughs> that would be mine. <laughs> uh, well, that's definitely the number one answer for twenty twenty so far. Great, yes, yeah, excellent. that's a first for sure. <laughs> if you could have only one superpower, what would it be and why? Oh, this is a tough one. I think teleportation. <laughs> I travel a lot and it would be great to just avoid all that time spent getting from place to place. Okay, now this is my follow up for anyone that says teleportation. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, have you seen the movie Jumper with Hayden Christensen? No, I haven't. All about teleportation. Rent it. You're welcome. Excellent. I will. <laughs> On my list. <laughs> Last but not least, please recommend a book that has had a profound effect on you, either personally or professionally. I think The Alchemist. I mean, it's so simple. It's You could practically give it to a child and they would probably understand even better than I do. But my bookshelf is basically a self-help section. <laughs> and, um, I've read everything from you know Tony Robbins to Dale Carnegie, everything in between. But I think The Alchemist sort of, I like that it bridges the gap between the spiritual and just fantasy. You know, that's one I haven't read yet. My my bookshelf looks very similar, although it's on all on audio. It's a virtual bookshelf. And it's the Alchemist. That's the Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Coelho. Okay. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm mutilating his name, but that's that's how I say it. I'm going to audio book, add to your cart, done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, thank you so much. Please tell the listeners where they can reach out to you at AD Pro and uh, that link that you promised earlier that's a special 20% off. Yes. Oh, actually, the link... I'll send you the code because you'll need to have a code in order to access the 20% off. Okay, so we'll put that in the show notes. Yeah, that would be great. And you can reach me if you feel like pitching me. It's K-A-T-Y underscore O-L-S-O-N at Condé dot com. K-A-T-Y underscore O-L-S-O-N at Condé dot com. Awesome sauce. Katie, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. This has been a wealth of information. And now you and I are networking friends. I'm going to submit projects to you. Please Sorry. do. <laughs> I will receive them with open arms. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You have an amazing week. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Thank you. Solace Ginger. Yes, Jethro. How adorable is Katie Olson? She sounded pretty adorable. She sounds like great fun. She doesn't know it now, but she and I are besties now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I took a lot away from what she had to say, and I'm sure Ellen Danik needs to be it nice and drunk because, Darla, you are going to do everything that she said to do in a project that you pitch her in that email. I thought that was a really, really useful information. Put I thought all so your too. Put all your housekeeping in there. Let it go. I have rights. I have this. I have that. Voila. And she may not go reject. <laughs> she won't Just stamp saying. it with a no, big, gonna, like in the cartoons. Like a big, like one of those big red ones. <laughs> <laughs> stamp. Yeah. And you know what? One thing, I mean, we do tend to be more of a contemporary designer, but we can definitely do classic. And it might be worth just to pick out a client for that, just to see where we can go. There you go. I do love that style. I mean, Corey Damon Jenkins, Veronica Solomon, Kelly Wurstler is more of a maximalist, but uh, hello, she's been in Architectural Digest a few times. I love that style as well. So we just need to find a client that can afford it. <laughs> there you go. Have fun, Darla. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for listening to the show. And thank you again to our new sponsor, Curry & Company. If you guys haven't checked out curryandcompany.com, run and don't walk, go over and visit their website and check out that little designer bullet at the bottom there and get yourself a trade account. Curry & Company has so many things, so many gorgeous things. We've used them in our projects, like we said, and we love them so much. They have Beth Ann. What more do you they want? They have Beth Ann Matari, who yeah, is the hello. queen of everything. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever the hell you're listening to this podcast on, follow us on social at Wingnut Social. And if you need help with your marketing for your interior design business or hell, any business, one eight seven seven Wingnut. Wingnuts are standing by to help you grow your business for 2020. And I think that's it for today, Nat. Got anything else? Nope. So long. See ya. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to tune in next week for more business and marketing info and insightful interviews with industry experts and design superstars. Can't wait? Then head on over to wingnutsocial.com for more great content to help you get your business to the next level.
I know I have a Baby Yoda on my computer. Baby Yoda is life. Baby Yoda is the best. You're just a trained dancing monkey. Entertain us. Good boy, Mango.